Hi guys, we're back with sessions 37. This is again diagnostic test and what we'll cover today is part 3 of 3. We're going to talk a little more about 12 lead EKGs, identifying anterior wall myocardial infarction which is what you get when you read the EKG, um, cardiogenic shock, the clinical picture and the complete blood count, the CBC and the signs and symptoms of sepsis. So let's get started. <clears throat> For more information on EKG reading, you can visit geonesis.com. There's plenty of information there for you. Now, the last time we spoke about the 12 lead EKG, we talked about it as a diagnostic test, and it is so one of many, of course, for the patient with a cardiac event. Once you establish that this patient has had an MI, where do you go from there? And that's what we're going to talk about today, the anterior wall myocardial infarction. What happens to the patient who comes in, of course, when a patient comes in with chest pain, shortness of breath, they do many workups, not just an EKG, there are many other diagnostic tests, but take the emergency situation, it starts off with uh, vital signs, something for chest pain, doing a 12 lead EKG. The 12 lead EKG in the patient with anterior myocardial infarction will show up in the V leads, V2, V3, V4. And it's important to note that the heart is a pump. And what happens to a patient with an anterior wall MI more than likely is pump failure, cardiogenic shock. These patients are really in distress. Reason being, the heart, the left ventricle, is where you get your pumping power. And the blood vessel that supplies that area is the left anterior descending. So imagine that being completely circulation being cut off to the left ventricle because that particular blood vessel has been affected. Now, the patient with a, an anterior wall MI who has gone into cardiogenic shock, we know is in real distress. And here are some of the things you'd expect to find. <clears throat> you would find uh, this patient with cool, clammy skin due to poor tissue perfusion, a drop in blood pressure, which is called hypotension. Naturally, if the blood pressure drops, then you would expect the urinary output to drop because there's not enough blood flow throughout the kidneys. And, of course, the EKG, I told you, would be one of the most important things to diagnose an anterior wall MI. Then that patient might wind up in the intensive care and be on mechanical ventilation. So be aware that a patient who's had a myocardial infarction, we know that the early symptoms are warnings of chest pain, shortness of breath, and some patients are paralyzed with that pain in the chest. Those pains should not be ignored. And, of course, we're going to talk a little about a complete blood count. The CBC, we know that a CBC is very often done at work, and there are various reasons why it's done. Let, let's take our own situation here. We have a patient who is two people are walking by and sees this person on the ground. Naturally, they call for help. 911 arrives and takes this patient to the emergency room where a workup is done. In the uh, lab values are drawn. A complete blood count reveals H and H being normal. H and H are the hemoglobin and hematocrit, and that way you can tell if a patient is anemic, in need of a blood transfusion. Of course, the hematocrit, which is the circulating volume, is typically very low. But this is not the case with this patient. What's abnormal is this patient has elevated WBCs, which means somewhere there's a sign of infection. And this points at this patient had abdominal surgery, Abdominal surgery, high fever, elevated WBCs are all suggestive of a septic event. This patient, by the way, did have a temperature of 102 on examination by the doctor and a very rapid heart rate, which usually goes along with high fever. So here there is a lesson to be learned, and I hope you've learned something from these lab values. Remember, there are many diagnostic tests that can be done when a patient comes into the ER or just for a doctor's admission. We do not have time to discuss them all, but I hope you have an idea of what about the lessons that can be learned. And so stay posted for more clinical information. Have a great week.